Wow, from New York, New York, you are listening, watching, being with us here on Extra Time Club and Country. I'm Andrew Weaver with my partners in soccer, Matt Doyle, David. I don't it was know, not it was bad. It was not. It was not good. It was fine. I, the the underlying numbers were 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 dominant. Um, I thought they they actually did create a, a number of really good chances. I just it's they've broken. First away win in Honduras tonight in 37 years. First win over Mexico in 21 years. First competitive draw in Mexico in 40 years. First Gold Cup semifinal. And he was like, you know, we brought him into trial as like a 17-year-old in Columbus. And we just like waited a little too long. And then he went to Europe. Still kills him. Oh. <laughs> Ryan Ruiz, what a player. All right. Right now with Costa Rica up, up one, lock it down, David. This is, I mean, this, these, are the, these are arguably the best in the region. And this is why on Monday on ETI, I said... Fonto Davies is a huge loss. Steven Estacchio is a huge loss. There are still match winners in there. You're able to calm down. And Kyle Laren went coast to coast like twice in this game and just couldn't square it cleanly. And Jonathan David had done it as well previous to that goal and couldn't get it done. And you could feel the press. It doesn't look like the same player. And the way he took that goal was what we've seen in winning a French championship and being a player that Real Madrid, Juventus, Arsenal, everyone is rumored after. That's the type of goal scoring he's capable of. The chest. You see those like where it's kind of mid chest all the time where they can kind of, they can have it in a really natural, comfortable spot. This is up close to his shoulder where he's kind of like curling around as he jumps, lands, and keeps going. It occurs to me though, you speak of Atiba Harris. God dang. I think Atiba Harris is president. Yeah, how many, if, 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 if we ever talk about Atibas, I always go straight to Harris. It's just the MLS nerd brain in me. Yeah, but he's one and a half. I mean, he's out here making history of these different generations. I was sitting there that his career has just sort of gone into hyperdrive. Like he was in the, and that was the U23s last year in March. That wasn't the senior team. To yeah. do what he's done, to be the difference maker he is on this March, we assume to history. We have Prado to play, ends up at Syracuse. But you talk to people and, and you see the talent, and it's just about finding the right place to develop. And I think Matt Turner said it best on our show where he was like, once he realized he could blow by ability to get around it. You tweeted, Doyle. I have to ask you. You basically said, look, it's done. I'll say it when nobody else will. Congrats on getting to the World Cup Canada. You don't feel yeah. it's too early. You you feel you feel Yeah, it's it's like even if, if Panama come back with a with a late flurry here uh and, and beat Costa Rica, I, I don't think this Canada team is going to, is going to blow it. They, they've proved to have just, we all had about this Canadian team a year ago, you know, going into games. It was like, yeah, just it's like, they have some scary guys going forward, but if you get at that back line, you'll find goals. Um, and like, they haven't given up many goals uh, early in qualifying. He was excellent as well. Um, and then, you know, the best attack in, in the, you know, on the continent, um, you're going to the world cup. Canadian fans, you're going to the World Cup, man. These guys are not going to blow it. They might, And he was able to hold up, and the team was able to hold up. Again, they get a shutout on the road, which is incredible. Vittoria went from guy to <laughs> how do we save him for the big games and the big moments. And Johnson, the guy was a draft pick a yeah. year ago. Like, Kamal Miller wasn't was a starter say, in Kamal Orlando. Miller's. He was yeah. a backup left back. Like, all of this has happened, and a lot of it's credit to Herdman. But a lot of it, I think, is credit to the structure that's more across the board, and they don't seem to carry the burdens of the past. And you can just feel that sort of in the in the personality of the team and the way that, you know, they approach these moments. You know, there's not the collapse button. that It used to be like every bugger to play with enough – to have that fear, I guess, right? To, to have that motivating fear to, like, if we don't go out there and, and – Go Do you out think it's kill, fear, though? Like, underpinning all of this. And, like, knowing that experience has kind of allowed them to 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 play with, like, freedom and ruthlessness. And, and it's, it's, it's why I don't types of errors that suggest this is ending anywhere except Qatar. They also have more depth. I mean, there's just – and not just depth, but there aren't any – there's no one attached, right? Everyone, well, that's been a big part of that. Uh, Scott Arfield as well, like kind of being that first domino and and at times being a part of the pitches and the bids for these players. Uh, I also think it's the the length now that TFC 
through the system, Maxime Crepeau, all these players. Uh, and then I think that helps open up the get the bridge that a Jonathan David can take over to Europe. So I, I think all of that has combined. And the hope is in the future, the CPL will be a part of it. Players can win the game because we don't have to worry about what's going on around us, right? For Dero, it was like, yeah, you could win this game, but we'll still probably lose because we have someone who doesn't play playing at center back or right back right now. And that's kind of was always they needed to attack forever. Yeah, And that's kind of what we've seen in qualifying is they have come after teams except mm-hmm. for the first half against Panama at home. And there's one other game, maybe Jamaica, I'm trying to think, from them is like, we can't take our foot off the gas at all. Uh, and you're starting to see that kind of push through to this youngest generation. It, it, I kind of agree with you, Dave. It kind of feels to me like they figured out, oh, other teams fear us. Like they're playing afraid, like they're playing, but fearing the consequences. No, when I when I say when I say they have that fear, I, I don't want like I don't want oh, yeah. I don't want it to be take, taken you're, you're as they're playing them afraid the World Cup. because they're a big chunk of them hit rock bottom at that uh, Gold Cup. They like that is a really really bad loss to take. There was a lot of hype around that team. There, like a lot of Canadian fans were saying, this is the team to do it. And then your perspective on what these games mean that's kind of fear to have and i think that uh it manifests itself with you know doing everything in your power to avoid that years ago five years ago now you've got a guy who's going to start in his prime on the road in honduras meanwhile alfonso davies the best player expected goals that win as planned it just was missing that little bit that we seem to be missing in a lot of games so it, it, I think that Greg Berhalter actually put his finger on exactly what was missing at halftime when it wouldn't take this team apart. Um, I mean, maybe that's a mistaken assessment from me because the underlying numbers have a, a tendency to be right in the long term. And the underlying number and it, I think, was the first sub. And the tempo of the game really died for the U.S. after that point. And so... We, 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 we came on Twitter spaces before and we all said, I hope they start with a high line. I, I, you know, get out every time that Dester Weah gets deep on the right side to drop it back quickly and switch the point of attack quickly. And it won't happen. It has never happened. It doesn't happen. So I'm sort of trying to accept it and move on. But if you. I, I thought he was fine. He was not as good as you wanted him to be. You want him to finish that chance. I'm sure he wanted to finish that chance as well. Was there a question in there? <laughs> but no, just you. Know, if you have thoughts on him, I would. Sure, I yeah. would. Is that what you're pointing fingers yeah. at? We could. I mean, we could have that discussion. So the the whole point of playing a false nine, and well, I, I agree with you, Weeby, that um, Ferrero, other than missing the the sitter, was really really good. With, and he does not create any depth. He's he's just kind of like hanging out there, inverting every single time, and even and then when he gets on the ball, he's still doing the same thing that got him hurt against Honduras. Four months ago, simpler game. I think he plays a lot more like Weah did tonight. Um, and and Weah, like Weah, like you can play him at left wing, and he will still create width and depth. And he will make that had injuries. He hasn't played nine in a while. I don't think you play Timothy Weah unless it's like a ten minute cameo, uh, you know, at the end of the game. So he's not starting. Aronson didn't look sharp. Uh- but you need Pulisic, and and I think that 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 that's for Greg Berhalter, that's for the team, that's for the American public, whatever you want to say it is for. He's talented. He's an elite soccer player. He needs to be able. You need to fall. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no. like, yeah, comfy. Like, let's get you in the comfy confines, all right? <laughs> so uh, it'll be interesting. But for Greg Berhalter, you have no choice. You have to find something with him because the, the option is not just Christian Pulisic. Is I. And I like kind of looked around, and then I asked the play-by-play guy I was working with. He's like, "Yeah, he's Jedi." And I was like, "Well, what's his actual name?" Not a single person knows. And he—I've now worked with him for years. Everyone else has worked with him longer. No one knows. Positive there, if it comes out of nowhere and it's planned for. The negative is it feels like you could even get more opportunities like this. And then he's just been really calm with his chances. He had another chance in this one. I think Des came in field and set him up. Years ago, my buddy said, you have to do it. I haven't done it with my Fulham goals. He finally got it done. How about Matt Turner, though? Not much to do in this game. But it seems like Greg Berhalter is uh, in the news-breaking business. <laughs> we all assumed Arsenal. Matt, it's an incredible story. You've been banging us in the head with a like a cast-iron skillet for a while about this guy. Before everybody was crowing about him. 
What do you think of just the story overall within a U.S. soccer? You know, checks any of those boxes, but like it, it like college soccer is always going to be a viable path because um, because of that lack, and there's no way to cover places where they don't play. Um, but at the same time, like it's a once in a lifetime chance to make a dream move, and um, you know, <laughs> he's faced longer odds before, uh, and, and I think he's. Like, no. All proof is that every time Zach Steffen's available, Greg Berhalter wants him on the field. That's all we've been shown over the last year or so. And so it seems like that will continue. The U.S. is better for having both of them in the pool, but there are negatives on both sides the way they play. Now, Matt Turner was fine with his feet today. I don't think they play back and play through him as often as they would have if Zach Steffen was in that game. I think you saw it a couple in moments where they did it. So... But at the same time, Matt Turner doesn't let in soft goals. You have pros and cons with both. And as Doyle said, it's, uh, yeah, I know. I probably shouldn't have said that coming out of the the last six weeks he had. I know this guy got Selena takes a spot from everybody. (laughs) Just give him a couple years. Damian Lodge, shout out Austin FC. Uh, MMA, any thoughts on the midfield? We haven't really touched much of that other than to say, hey, good first half from Weston McKinney. McKinney's first half was great. Like that was... I don't want to say the best, but like it was close to the best I've ever seen him play for for the national team. Second half, he was so sloppy. Like a, a a big part of the game kind of getting away from the U.S. over the final 20 minutes was McKenney like just becoming a turnover machine. Whereas in the first half, he was so locked in. Um, so that was it was it was good and it was bad because he showed you the ceiling, but he reminded you also that he's still, uh, you know. He, he's not quite in his prime and he's not uh, quite at the point where, where he's going to go out there every game and, and, you know, be the focal point for 90 minutes. Uh, Musa though, is, he's my favorite player in the pool and he wasn't great tonight either. I thought he was Jermaine Jones actually said it at halftime of, of the ESPN broadcast. He was dropping too deep. He was getting outside of that diamond just to get on the ball instead of staying in between the lines and like making them, a little bit more compact, which then opens up the the flanks for the the wingers and uh, and the fullbacks. Um, so he was a little too eager to get on the ball, but he fixed it in the second half. And then, like every time he touches a ball, I feel like something good is going to happen. Like he's going to advance at fifty yards upfield, either you know with a one-two or you know a nice pass, or or just like just you know, dribble three guys. Uh, like I I love this guy. He's amazing. We also the... know the area he likes to pick up is where Weston McKinney was being successful in that first half. And so I think there was kind of a give and take because Musa loves to be in between the right back, you know, and the center forward in that area, pick up the ball, glide to his right at times, beat people on the half turn and go centrally other times. That's where Weston McKinney was living in that first half when he was being successful. And so Musa had to come off that move towards the left side and then as Doyle mentioned, it felt like then he's trying to find the game a little bit. He's left less comfortable. He's less sure of his positioning and when he's going to get the ball and where he's going to get his touches from. So he kind of sort of floated in and out of it. Um, and then Tyler Adams, you still need a level of improvement in terms of the build out. And he had one mistake in the end of the first, second half where he was lucky that the U.S. wasn't tied 1-1. I mean, he yep. just gave the ball away at the top of the 18. But he had other ones where he comes in and makes incredible I think it was the first two minutes of the game he comes in and makes a slide tackle going towards his own goal covering for Dest and Zimmerman out of midfield and he's still the best in this pool at closing space at covering ground in midfield and if the U.S. ever actually presses high probably would be the best there it's just you know as Greg says at halftime of every game we're, we're just working on it what is messed up with the press I mean Greg would say the spacing between midfield and forwards so what do you think is off in that sense? Uh, I think that was a big part of it, yeah. Uh, I also think there's – it seems like there's more thinking yeah, and, and less just playing. Um, and I think we saw it at times with, with Tyler being weirdly resistant or, or to playing an early vertical ball. Um, there was one, I think, midway through the second half, and it was like, he he got on the run and he did a guy and he's, you know, kind of not in the open field, but like he's, he's got a pocket of space and driving the ball forward. And it's just like, release the ball forward. 
and he didn't do it. He took like three extra touches. And it's like, you play for RB Leipzig, man. Like your whole existence is playing the ball forward as early as possible. And it looks like there's a little bit of overthinking there. I think, especially from, from Adams in this game. I, I think there's also to be a great pressing team. There has to be perfect fluidity in knowing where the next person supposed to be and where your other teammates supposed to be. And as exciting as all of this is, I said it in possession as well. This still is not a team that knows each other that well and has that has had that long to work together, right? Walker Zimmerman wasn't in this team. Chris Richards had never been with this group before because of being in Europe and all those things. And then COVID um, Serginio Des knows some players from being a youth player. Eunice Musa never played a youth game with the U S so you're looking at a lot of players who don't know each other that well. And I think when you look at national teams that are great at pressing, and I think you sometimes have to put great in quotes because it's different than what you're seeing at the club level. It takes years, right? It's Bielsa with Chile. It's not six months in. It's three years in after a tournament and a qualifying cycle. Dude, we're three years we're three years into the Burhalter era, though. It's a COVID error. And on the field today, there was one <laughs> field player over the age of 24. Yeah, that's so right. it, it's a young group, and it was not a time period where you had a normal cycle of here's this qualifying games, here's these friendlies, here's the nations league. like the nations league and the gold cup were on top of each other in the same summer instead of having two full summers to work with your players. Injuries to and Adams, that, injuries to Pools, it kept them out of a lot of sort of moments that the whole group could be together. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. St- you still would. You still would want to. St- I. St- we all want to see more. Right? Yeah, I would. love that's why we're sort of in this place. Like, ah, gosh, it's fine. You know, hey, we got three points at home. It's just fine. It's not the best. But look, Sunday's a big day. U.S. going to Canada. Thought David Goss might be going to Canada. I met the amount of people there allowed, and it's the whole thing. I'm going to be here with you, Doyle. Yeah, oh, that's great. In 20 years. Home to talk to you. In 20 years, if you have a conversation, will you be there? Like, oh, yeah, I was, I was almost there. I could have oh. been the second team in the octagonal right now. This is the return from Nashville. Big draw for Canada. How jacked up are you about this particular game? I mean, Doyle, you said, hey, Canada, you're in the World Cup, but you haven't said that about the U.S. Is that just because mm-hmm. for the U.S., it's not until the end of the line? That, that no, we'll... I'm, a, I'm a Canada fan. I've been a, oh, yeah. rooting for Canada for, for decades, Weeby. Um, no, like, I just think Canada's played better, right? So that's why I've said that about them. But this U.S. team, I know they haven't lost a lot of games. It, seems to me like they could still figure out how to lose some games. Um, that said, I'm not like, I'm weirdly not all that jacked up for this game. For both teams, the, the third game of this window is like weirdly more important. Um, maybe less so for Canada, uh, but they already have such a, you know, a nice little cushion there. Um, it, like, if the U.S. beats Honduras on Wednesday, if it, I don't want to say it doesn't matter what happened in this game. Six points from this group or from this this series of qualifiers just about gets it done. So, it, like, I'm I'm interested in it. It should be a good game. Um, I'm really intrigued by what John Herdman ha- might have up his sleeve, um, but it does it. It's not, it doesn't feel like an edge of my seat type of thing. I said it going into the Mexico game. There are very few of these high quality games that matter. And the way that it will be played, I think will be different than what we see in a normal CONCACAF World Cup qualifier. So from a U.S. point of view, can these players perform and win in a game like that? Can these players, you know, play against players with the quality of Canada and I'm not sure Canada might come out and not try and take the ball, but I don't think that will be true. So can the U S play against the ball, which they have not been able to do or had to do uh, a ton in world cup qualifying. So I think it's a different, different experience. It's a different challenge that you're looking at. And it's one that probably projects more towards what a world cup world cup game will look like on the flip side for Canada. Like it's happening, right? It's been a slow steady of like, you can win that game. We'll talk about it as a country, but we don't really care. Okay, you won 
You beat Haiti to get into the next round of World Cup qualifying. We'll be excited, but we're not going to get too excited. And it feels like it's been building for a really long time. The Mexico game, I think, was the final like explosion that could happen. But if you beat the U.S. on a Sunday afternoon on national TV in Canada to pretty much clinch your spot at the World Cup, that could be a huge moment. So I think for Canada, it's what we've talked about for like nine months gaining the confidence back of the country, gaining the fandom back, saying it's okay to believe in us, it's okay to jump on board. And it sucks that Alfonso Davies won't be there because I think he's been the face of a lot of this. But it also gives a chance for Tejon Buchanan and Kyle Lahren and Richie Larea to become you know, national faces and for Drake to text them as well to hang out after the game. Come on, we need to <laughs> get the crew in the group chat, Drake. This is not a 1v1 situation, all right? Get them all in here. Do you think Greg Berhalter will rotate heavily, Doyle? Uh, I don't I don't think he'll rotate as heavily as he did against Panama, but I, I, I think I'll put my money on four new starters. Miles? Um, I think Miles, I Robinson yeah. com- Miles Robinson comes in. Reggie Cannon comes in. Miles comes uh, in for Chris Richards. Yes. You would be taking the, the one player who's in season out. He looks shaky tonight. Okay. Um, I, I, I'll i take Reggie Cannon over uh, Serginho Dest. You don't think it's Yedlin? No, Yedlin. I don't. Okay. I don't. I mean, that might be wrong. It, either way, Serginho Dest is not starting this game. Um, I think Pepe comes in at center forward. It's three. Yeah. Uh, and I think Aaronson, Aaronson. starts for Wea. And you yeah. think the three midfield stays? The, the I do. three midfielders stay. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I, I agree with Doyle. I think Yedlin will start, but otherwise, I, I agree with all those moves. And then I guess Zach Steffen's a question mark. Um, if he's available, as I said, I, I think. Greg I don't will even. Go with him, he's not even here, right? He, he's in England. Yeah, he hasn't flown in as far I think, as I Oh, think I thought he is... came and then no. got. Yeah. I thought no, he was in a, Ohio. This is a three game window. For Zach, for uh, not for, Zach, for uh, Matt Turner, I think. Okay, there you Just, go. You know, so I was saying about the bad back. Like sometimes these things, you know, they they take a while to heal. They take a while you're, to heal. You're telling me about it. I haven't been able to move for two days. Nice. <laughs> We're all suffering here, but uh, nobody top suffering in Concacaf. Wins for the U.S. Wins for Canada. That keeps Canada top that octagonal. U.S. in second on 18 points. Mexico, which we haven't talked about yet, coming from behind. Ten man Jamaica. Damian Lowe, inner my or excuse me, yeah. Inter Miami is Damian Lowe. By the way, according to the ESPN feature that was really good on DeAndre Yedlin. Oh, yeah. Inter Miami's DeAndre Yedlin as well. Just in the middle of the article. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, ah, I thought that was is that confirmed, but it is now pretty much confirmed uh, in that sense as well. Red card for Damian Lowe, but Jamaica get a goal. And at 10 men, they tried to play, and it didn't work out in the end for a Mexico pickup, too. Uh, it feels like that top three is becoming more and more locked in the next two games in the. Uh, in this particular window, will tell us a lot. Match day 10 and 11, and then uh, we'll finish it out in March. Any final thoughts, guys, before we get out of here? Of course, we'll be back for pregame and postgame on Sunday. Pregame on Twitter Spaces, as always, and then postgame in the same spots. Facebook. I just Twitter, want to ask YouTube, you, Weeby, MLS are, are you jacked for Sunday's game? Because we, you I've always, been, you I've always been, put I've it on a platter waiting. for us. We yeah. never, we how never hear how I? Andrew Weeby feels. Well, I got to tell you, number one, super jacked it's during nap time. On a Sunday, <laughs> that is a huge win. Wait, do you mean brand. do you mean your your nap time or the would kids norm time? would normally be my nap time? But in okay. this case, I'm making a special a special sacrifice for the for you guys and for everybody else out there. Just just watch this game. No, I'm really excited. I think that uh, the Canada story and the vibes and the quality of player and the way it relates back to MLS and what we're doing, what I'm doing every single day, which is watching, thinking about, caring about North American soccer is just this behemoth. It just changes everything. Um, for the development of talent in this in this continent, for like the balance of power in CONCACAF, to have another team in this region that could go to the World Cup and you legitimately look at it and say, they could make real noise. And, and to have it be Canada. And I don't know if you have the numbers right in front of you, Dave, but like just to think back through that and the generations that have lived through, I mean – abject repeat failure and are now having this moment just that on the Canada side let alone the fact that I, I'm, I'm an American a U.S. national team fan this is a huge game it's a big test 
I always want our guys to play well. I always want our team to play well. I want to be inspired by what they do. And these are the times that you can do that. So there are a lot of times in this little soccer world they're in that I can feel jaded where I'm like, golly, man, we do this all the time. Like, how many soccer games have I watched? How many have I seen? But this one to me, we don't know how many more of these we're going to get. How many octagonals there are going to be, if any. 2026 will not be like this. So every time we get that opportunity, and that opportunity is now Canada first in the octagonal, and the U.S. trying to pass them with the level of players that are now on both teams, with the coaching uh, like wrinkles that John Herdman has thrown and that, that Greg can throw and often does at halftime. I, mean, I just think they're two really good soccer minds. That's fun. That's exciting. That's a progression of our soccer culture, of the soccer world that we live in that wasn't anywhere close to this two years ago, three years ago, four years ago even, let alone a decade or 20 years. So I'm Jack. I'm jacked, yeah. Shot, shot over the bow of Benito Florio right there. Well, there, uh, there were some not, not so pretty times in the near, in the near past for Canada. Can I, and for the U.S. too. And for the U.S. too. Yeah, like, You know, like, let's not take well, this for granted. Well, that's why you keep, Doyle keeps saying, like, oh, they're in, blah, blah, blah. It's like, I don't feel confident that the U.S. is in the World Cup yet because the rug's been pulled out. I, I, can I tell you the ads? safe. According to, to global, We Global Football, um, who are a bunch of nerds who, who hold run on, hold spreadsheets. On, let me guess. It's on percentages right now? Mm-hmm. I'm going to guess the U.S. are 87%. You're low. Wow. Really? 93. You're still low. Wow. 98. 98.8% for the U.S. Wow. 99, 99.4% for Mexico. 99.5% for Canada. This feels like a 27 to 3 situation. I feel like we're about to get screwed. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, look, I, do I think we'll go to the World Cup? Yes. Does that mean I'm going to be less jacked up for this particular game on Sunday? 3.05 p.m. Eastern, because I always do Central Time, so you heard me say 2.05. 3.05 p.m. Eastern, Paramount Plus, whatever. So I am. I, I wish that Alfonso Davies was there. I wish that Eustachio was there. I wish that Christian Pulisic was in better form. But so you can't get everything you wish for, man. I'll probably get in trouble for saying this if Canada doesn't qualify, but this is this would be a fun team in a World Cup. Like yeah. has match winners. John Herman has months to prepare for three specific opponents just to get four points or five points to get through. Like this is the type of team that's like a fun group, similar well, probably not similar, but like what we saw with like Iran in the last World Cup, what we've seen with Croatia. Like this could be a fun team in a World Cup. Meanwhile, the US, what, they had the youngest team in called up for qualifiers in this window and then we're gonna dump them all none of those guys go to the world cup we bring a whole new group in Cade cowell on the left or Cade <laughs> cowell on the right kevin paredes on we're the bringing left the, we're Josh bringing the in the middle no one no one born before 2003 so peppy is there Yunus musa geo reyna they're out Boom. that's all, why all Lucci's those, in. all those like Lucci 25 year old geezers get out of here you guys are old you're creaky yeah. it's a young man's game next generation time to turn it's, it's, it over it's just exciting it's exciting for for both these teams to be at this level uh and to, just to see what happens on sunday who's going to be the star who's going to have a moment Who's going to, you know, submit themselves in national lore. That could very well happen for any one of these Canadian players. That could very well happen for these U.S. players as we build into a World Cup and knock on wood again. I, I know those percentages and go there. That's where we're at in the octagonal right now. Canada first in the octagonal. U.S. second. Mexico is third. Panama and then Costa Rica. Any thoughts? Any comments? Anything ahead of Sunday? 401 MLS. Extra time at MLSsoccer.com. We'll be back for the pregame show on Twitter Spaces when the lineups come out for the U.S. and Canada, and we will wrap it up afterwards. Thanks for joining us, whether uh, live or on demand. Subscribe to Extra Time wherever you listen to podcasts. You can watch us on YouTube as well every single week on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Are you kidding me? I've been doing this for 10 years on Mondays and Thursdays. It's late. We're out. Peace. Adios, everybody.